In the gospel today, we hear that our Lord, coming into this little town, runs into this little funeral procession of this young man who died. And this is very good for us to hear a story like this, because it makes us think about death. There's nothing more certain than death. Everything else in our lives, we can say that it'll probably happen, or that something might happen or will almost certainly happen, but there's only one thing that we can say without the slightest shadow of a doubt, that it will happen, and that is that we will die. And and this is a very good thought for the spiritual life. It makes us want to live like good Catholics as well as we can and do the duties of our state in life and avoid sin and, and practice virtue and use our time as well as we can, because we don't know how much of it there is. Even if we do live to old age, that's still not a long time. Someone might live to be 70 or 80 or sometimes even 90 years old. But how long is one year? One year by itself is not that much. If, if you think about last summer, what you did last summer, it's probably seems like something recent. And already that's one whole year gone by out of however many we have. And think about how many people die suddenly in the prime of life and only get a small number of years in this world. We're conditioned to think that we're safe from that sort of thing now. Our, our society is very sheltered from the thought of death. We have advanced medical techniques and, and wonder drugs and, and truly ingenious methods of surgery that, that have extended people's lifetimes in many cases by many years. That's certainly true. And every year, cars have more and more airbags in them and they get uh, the inside and outside panels get softer and softer and safer and safer. And there's less chance of being killed. And when you buy an electric device, now they all have three prongs. And I guess somehow that, that prevents you from being electrocuted or it makes it safer anyway. And just about every product that we can buy at the store, except food, has long warning labels all over it telling us everything that could possibly go wrong when we're using this uh, this this machine or this device or this bottle of, of cleaning product, and this makes us think that as long as we follow all these warning labels, that we'll be completely safe using whatever it is. And this creates a sense of, of unreality about death, that we think that we're so safe now that we're basically going to live forever. And that's a complete illusion. I'm sure all of us know at least several people who have died very suddenly. And no matter how safe they, they make cars nowadays, no matter how many safety how many stars they get in the safety rating, they're still very dangerous. People still die in car accidents every day. A few days ago, I, I had to go to a, one of those pick-and-pull car junkyards to get a spare part, and I was walking around this lot full of all these junked cars to look for the right, right kind of car that I needed. And I finally found one, and I went up, and I stuck my head through the window to see if it had the part I was looking for. And all of a sudden, I noticed that this car was terribly smashed in. It was in the junkyard because it had been in a horrific accident. The front and the side of the car were just completely caved in, a complete twisted metal. And as I was poking my head through the driver's side window... Looking around inside, it occurred to me that by all appearances, it was very likely that the driver of that car had been killed in the accident and that his soul or, or her soul had been judged and sent into eternity in the exact place where I was sticking my head and looking inside. And it was a scary thought because that person would not have had more than a split second to know that Death was approaching and, and to prepare for it. And that shows us that no matter how young or healthy we are, 
we can always die when we least expect it. And just think about the young man in the, par- in this, uh, in the story in the gospel. He died in the prime of life, and the scripture doesn't say what he died of, but we can be sure that for most of his life he wasn't expecting to die young. Nobody does, and, and yet he did. There are two ways that we can die. We can either die well or we can die badly. If we live a lukewarm and sinful life attached to this world, then our death will be very sad and and difficult and tragic. People who love this world work very, very hard to acquire material things, and they make that the the object of their happiness. And when they're on their deathbed, they're going to leave all of that behind. Everything that they've acquired, that they've spent all their, their time and, and their, their energy trying to accumulate is just going to be gone. Death is the worst possible thief. It deprives us of everything that we have in this world. On the other hand, think about someone who has led a fervent life and who has thought about heaven constantly and has worked for it and suffered for it and has striven to earn it Someone like that is not going to be attached to this world. What he really, really wants is heaven. And on his deathbed, he can quote the verse of the Psalms that says, We enter with joy into heaven to behold, to possess, and to enjoy the things of the Lord in the land of the living. The death of a lukewarm Catholic is also going to be frightening because he doesn't enjoy the consolations of our religion. He doesn't experience the peace of a good conscience and of of being detached from the world. He doesn't experience the peace of the love of God. He may have confessed his sins now and then during his life, but he wasn't really afraid of his sins. He just, when he thought about his sins, he figured, well, that's human nature, I'm, I'm trying, but that's the best I can do. But on his deathbed, those sins are going to come back to haunt him. He's going to go into eternity wondering if his confessions were valid, if, if he had really decided not to commit them anymore, or whether he confessed all the circumstances that he should have and the correct number of times. And for the same reason, he's also going to be wondering about the times that he received Holy Communion after his careless confessions, when he hadn't really turned from his sins. And when he maybe didn't remove himself from the occasion of sin. And someone in this position will be wondering about his Holy Viaticum, his last Holy Communion, and wondering whether he's properly disposed to receive our Lord, but... He's going to be too weak and his mind is going to be too foggy to to resolve this problem. On the other hand, someone who has led a devout life and been zealous to receive our Lord in Holy Communion and received him with great fervor and devotion will also receive his last Holy Communion in the same way. But when the lukewarm Christian is on his deathbed, He's going to be thinking about the the death of his body and the decay and corruption that it's going to go through in the tomb. And he's always taken great care of his body and always gratified his senses. And now he's thinking about being buried underground, being eaten by worms and, and his body decaying. And the thought is going to be a torture for him. On the other hand, someone who has mortified his body and disciplined it and not given in to his passions and his desires is not going to be concerned by this. In fact, he's going to look forward to the resurrection of his body in a glorious state. And last of all, when when a, a lukewarm Catholic thinks about the judgment that he is going to have to face very shortly, that is the most terrifying thought of all. Even after his confession, he's still not going to be completely sure that he has rejected mortal sin because he's been so attached to it in his life. He's going to be afraid of all the venial sins that 
that he committed that he didn't pay much attention to during his life and now he realizes what a terrible debt of, of guilt and temporal punishment they have, they have acquired for him. And he's going to wait for the sentence of the judge in a state of absolute terror. He will wish that he could go back and lead a better and a holier life. But at that point, it's going to be too late. But think about a good, fervent Catholic who has been careful to avoid mortal sin during his life and deliberate venial sins. And he confessed them with great sorrow when he did fall. And he is going to look forward to seeing his Lord and Master at the judgment and seeing him welcome him into heaven. When we die, it's going to be like one of those two cases. But the way we live now will determine which one it's going to be. So let us be mortified and avoid sin as much as possible, especially mortal sin and and deliberate venial sin, and have a great love for God and for Our Lady, for the sacraments. And let us pray every day for the gift of final perseverance. And if we do that, then when our time comes to die, our Lord will come to us as he came to the son of the widow of name, and he will raise us unto eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.